Hey guys, Braz's Reptiles back again. This is going to be our fourth ball python genetics video. Um, in this one, we're going to cover um, just some basic probability odds. You know, if I breed this to this, what are my odds of getting this? So, you know what? Let's jump right into it. We're not going to draw up any punting squares. We're not going to do anything like that. We're just going to just talk some basics and really deal with just the number of genes is really all we need to know. So let's get right into it. Let's say that I breed a spider to a normal. We're going to start basic, okay? Well, one key thing we need to realize when in ball python genetics is every gene gets passed on half of the time. That's just the that that's how this that, that's the probability of this happening. So spider, this one gene is going to get passed on half of the time, okay? So really, so right here, knowing that, see me how there's only one gene here, we know that if it's going to get passed on half the time, half of the clutch is going to be spider. And since there are no other genes, the other half has to be normal, okay? This is very basic, and then we're just going to keep adding on to this. So now, let's do spider to pastel. Okay, so we're shooting for bumblebees here, but you're going to say, well, what are my odds of getting a bumblebee? Well, let's figure that out. Um, so your odds of getting a bumblebee. Well, we know that spider is passed on half of the time. And we know that pastel is passed on half of the time, okay? We know that. that that's the rule with every gene, every dominant, codominant gene. That's They're passed on half the time. So when you say, okay, I know that, but what do I? How, how does that help me? Well, what you do whenever you have this is you just multiply. And in multiplying fractions, all you do is you multiply the numerator by the denominator. So our probability of getting a bumblebee is 1 in 4, or 25%. Very, very, very simple. Okay, so let's add some more. Now, let's breed a bumblebee. I'm going to write out pastel spider, though, for the sake of this. And let's breed it to another spider. I'm sorry. Pastel. We're shooting for killer bees here. Okay. Pastel, we know, is passed on half the time. Spider, half the time. Pastel again, half the time. This is for killer bees now. We multiply the numerators straight across, multiply the denominators straight across. We get 1 and 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. A 1 and 8 shot at a killer bee. Okay, very easy to do. This is not complicated, and this is just a little trick to, um, to really, to just mentally do this. And another way, this is kind of my, how I like to think of it as, you can do 1 over however many genes, so here we have pastel, spider, and pastel. You count this pastel twice, you know, it, it, you count it one, two, three. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do one, two, three genes. So your probability of hitting all of these is going to be one over two to the power of however many genes you have. So two to the third, which two to the third is eight, because that's two times two times two, which equals eight. So that equals one over eight. So that's just a little a little trick here. So let's do a couple more just so we're sure you got the hang of it. Let's go with let's breed a super Yeah, we can do that. Super pastel two. spider okay and here's where knowing the genetics of stuff really is going to help you well so you may say okay well i know spider that's it's going to get passed on half time but what about super pastel i don't know how to do that exactly okay well super pastel it's a super form super um form of pastel in a super pastel animal the only thing it can give is a 
is passed out. If you'll go back and watch my punt and square video, I really covered this in a lot more depth and explained to you why that is. But Super Pastel is only able to donate pastel, and it's going to do that every time. So you can just put one over one, okay? Oh, and here we're shooting for bumblebees, okay? So again, we multi we're multiplying, so straight across. So our odds of getting a bumblebee are one and two, okay? But that's because everything is going to be pastel, so we, we know that. And then on top of that, half of the time, spider is going to be donated on top of that pastel to give us a bumblebee. So I know that one's probably kind of fuzzy. But again, go back and watch my punt and square video, and I clarify why that is. And also my ALS video, even though that wasn't an ALS, will kind of cover it as well. Um, okay, so let's get kind of crazy now. Let's do cinnamon pastel inchy what else can we throw in there inchy pinstripe times so we're going to say that's one animal say we have a crazy an inchy pinstripe pewter male and then let's breed him to an Breed him to a cinnamon. We'll breed him to a cinnamon spider. These are just some random things that are coming out. Okay, so let's do one over two, one over two, one over two. And again, guys, these are the odds of breeding these animals together and hitting everything. So, I mean, because whenever you breed this, you know, if I were to do this, breeding a cinnamon pastel inchy pinstripe to a cinnamon spider, you, the goal of that breeding is to hit a, is to produce an animal that has every single gene in it. You know, and that's why we do this. We want the most crazy looking cool genes packed in an animal. So that's what we're finding. Whenever we do this, this is the probability of hitting every single gene in the clutch. Um, so, okay. So again, we could do it like this, or we could say, okay, there's one gene, two gene. Let me change colors here. There's one gene, two genes, three, four, five, and six. So we can say, remember my trick from the last slide, I can do one over two to the power of however many genes there are. In this case, there are six. Okay, so what that means is I'm taking two times two times two times two times two times two, which is... 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So this is one of those crazy 1 and 64. Because here there's 1 and a quarter that, that will get this. 1 and an eighth. I'm sorry. Yes, 1 and an eighth that will get this. 1 and 16th that will hit all these. 1 and 32 that will hit these. And then again, a 1 and 64 that will hit every single gene, being there being six of them. So... There's a little, little trick for you there. Okay, now let's throw in some recessive garbage. See what, what we can do there. Um, we'll do, let's start with some heads. Uh, let's do pastel. No, let's just, let's start very basic. Let's do head albino to albino. And these, they're really... <laughs> They're a lot more difficult to, you know, kind of make sense of in your head, the recessive side of things, whereas it may be, you know, more easier and beneficial for you just to write it down and draw a quick pun and square. And, um, and if that, if you're more of a visual person like that, you need to see it. Um, again, check out my um, previous videos. The pun and square video will definitely um, help you out there. Okay, so again here, it helps to know your genetics. Know what's going on. So uh, your albino, you know that it's going to get passed on 100% of the time. So 1 over 1 is the same thing as 1, um, which is 100%, um, because everything out of this albino is going to be het. It can only pass on a het. Um, so again, check out my genetics. I believe it's episode 2. It is. It's episode 2, the punt and square, if, um, if you don't understand that. Your head albino, it's going to pass on that het albino gene half the time. So then we multiply this, and here we're seeing how many, uh, what are our odds of producing an albino out of this breeding. So we multiply the 
numerators we get one, denominators we get two. So half of this breeding will be albinum. And again, it's a lot more difficult to, you know, to make sense of in your head whenever we're dealing with recessives, um, because we don't want to think of a het. Really, what this breaks down to is this albino. If you, if it helps you to think of this in terms of codominant stuff, this albino it acts like a super, and this het albino acts like a just the uh, non-super form of a codominant gene. Um, so anyway, I don't that probably just confused you more. So. But um, I think that's really all I'm going to do on this video. I'm going to keep it, try and keep it pretty short and sweet. But um, just able to calculate some quick probabilities of what the um, what my odds are of hitting some pretty crazy stuff in some clutches. So um, again, just a quick recap: count the number of genes that there are. Um, put one over two to the power of however many those number of genes there are. And then, bam, those are your odds of producing that golden animal that has every single gene both the mom and dad were able to give. So I hope this was um, informative. I know it was kind of quick, rushed. hope it wasn't, you know, just confusing. So anyway, guys, um, and I'm always, you know, trying to think of new videos to do. So if you can think of anything that you want clarification on or would just like me to highlight or talk about, uh, feel free to comment, send me a message, you know, however you want to do that um, and I definitely um, be willing to do that because I'm running out of stuff to do this was just something that um, I thought of that I, I wish somebody had done this video for me whenever I I first started because this makes things so much easier just counting up the number of genes one over two to the power of that or multiplying out one half you know same thing um, it just it's a neat little trick that I I use a lot and I really like so anyway guys don't forget to subscribe, Brazos Reptiles. Um, check out number, this is the fourth episode of this series, so check out one through three if you haven't already. Hopefully there's some good stuff in there that everybody can take something away from. So don't forget to subscribe, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks so much.